welcome to F8. Yeah. We are gathered here at the second biggest event called F8 this week. And, uh, you know, we probably should have seen this one coming after, <laughs> probably should have seen this coming after Fast and Furious 7. <laughs> Didn't. It's our bad. Now, while we don't have The Rock here today, we do have the tech equivalent, David The Rock Marcus. <laughs> and while we may not live our lives a quarter mile at a time, <laughs> I know at least some people here live their lives one quarterly earnings at a time. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, bear with me. I got one more. One more for you. All right. Um, while Fast and Furious's tagline is never give up on family, ours is similar. Never give up on the family of apps. <laughs> All right. Not as catchy. Not as catchy. Uh, I could just keep going. I wrote like six more of these, but I understand that some of you are here to see a tech keynote. So, uh, so let's get to it. Uh, so you may have noticed that we rolled out some cameras across our apps recently. That was act one. Photos and videos are becoming more central to how we share than text. So the camera needs to be more central than the text box in all of our apps. So today we're going to talk about act two, where we go from here. And it's tied to this broader technological trend that we've talked about before, augmented reality. Now, before we get into that, uh, last month I, I wrote a letter on building community. I have it here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's long. It's like 6,000 words. And you know, I'm, I, I'm not sure if all you guys got a chance to read every word of it, so I figured maybe we'd just start by reading it to you right now. Uh, <laughs> All right, in all seriousness, this is an important time to work on building community. You know, we live at a time when society is divided, and we all have a lot of work to help bring people closer together. And when we talk about this divide, a lot of us talk about the economic issues. But I think a bigger part of the solution is social as well. We all get a lot of meaning from the communities we're a part of, and whether they're companies or churches, sports teams or volunteer groups, they give us a sense of purpose. Right, this feeling that we're a part of something bigger than ourselves, that we're needed, and that we're not alone. So these groups make up our social fabric, and that's why it's so striking that membership in all these groups has declined so much over the last few decades. Since the 70s, membership in all kinds of different local groups has gone down by as much as a quarter. So that's a lot of people who now need to find a sense of purpose uh, somewhere else. For the past decade, Facebook has focused on connecting friends and family. And now, with that foundation, our next focus is building community. We've always done a lot of work to help people share and get a diversity of opinions out there. And we're always going to do this. But now, in addition, we're also going to work on building common ground. Not just getting more different opinions out there, but also helping to bring people closer together. And there's a lot to do here. We have a full roadmap. Uh, of products to help build groups and community, uh, help build a more informed society, help keep our communities safe. And we have a lot more to do here. Uh, and we're reminded of this uh, this week by the tragedy in Cleveland. And our hearts go out to the family and friends of Robert Godwin Sr. And uh, we have a lot of work, and we will keep doing all we can to prevent tragedies like this from happening. Now, since this is F8, our developer conference, today we're going to focus on the technology that we're building together for the long term. Because in the future, technology is going to keep making us more productive, and that's going to change how we all work. It's going to free us up to spend more time on uh, the things we all care about, like enjoying and interacting with each other and expressing ourselves in new ways. In the future, I think that more of us are going to contribute to culture and society uh, in ways that are not measured by traditional economics and GDP. A lot more of us are going to do what today is considered the arts. And that's going to form the basis of a lot of our communities. So that's why I'm so excited about augmented reality. Because it's going to make it so that we can create all kinds of things that until today have only been possible in the digital world. And we're going to be able to interact with them and explore them together. 
So at last year's F8, we talked about our 10-year roadmap、uh, to give everyone in the world the power to share anything they want with anyone. And one of the key long-term technologies that we talked about is augmented reality. Now we all know where we want this to get eventually, right? We, we want glasses or eventually contact lenses that look and feel normal, but that let us overlay all kinds of information and digital objects on top of the real world. So we can just be sitting here and we want to play chess. Snap! Here's a, a chessboard, and we can play together.、Uh, you want to watch TV? We can put a digital TV on that wall, and instead of being a piece of hardware, it's a one-dollar app instead of a five-hundred-dollar piece of equipment. So think about how many of the things that we have in our lives. Actually, don't need to be physical. They can be digital, and think about how much better and more affordable and accessible they're going to be when they are. So think about going to Rome on vacation and having information about the Colosseum overlaid on the actual building or directions overlaid on the actual street. And think about if your daughter is a big Harry Potter fan, for her birthday you can change your home into Hogwarts. Although I bet some of you were hoping I'd hit the toilet paper button. <laughs> Now. We're all about extending the physical world online. When you become friends with someone on Facebook, your relationship gets stronger. When you join a community online, that physical community gets stronger. So augmented reality is going to help us mix the digital and the physical in all new ways, and that's going to make our physical reality better. So that's why this is such an important trend. Now, when we talk about augmented reality. There are three important use cases、uh, that we think about: the ability to dis display information,、uh, like directions or messages or notifications;、uh, the ability to add digital objects, like the chessboard or the TV screen I was talking about; and the ability to enhance existing objects, like、uh, your home or your face. Now, I used to think that. Glasses were going to be the first mainstream augmented reality platform, and that we'd get them, you know, maybe five or ten years from now, we'd get the form factor that we all want. But over the last couple of years, we've started to see primitive versions of each of these use cases on our phones and cameras. So for displaying information,、uh, we've all seen people take photos and write text on them, or circle things, or draw arrows to highlight information. For digital objects, we have games like Pokemon, where、uh, you can overlay a digital Pokemon on top of the real world in front of you. And for enhancements, we have things like face filters and style transfers to make our images and videos more fun. Now, a lot of people look at this stuff, and it seems so basic, right? And you, you ask, you know, maybe this is just you know what kids are into doing these days. But you know, we look at this and we see something different. We see the beginning of a new platform. We're not using primitive tools today because we prefer primitive tools. We're using primitive tools because we're still early in the journey to create better ones. And in order to create better tools, first we need an open platform where any developer in the world can build for augmented reality without having to first build their own camera and get a lot of people to use it. But when you look around at all the different cameras that are out there today, no one has built a platform yet. So today we're going to start building this platform together. And we're going to make the camera the first mainstream augmented reality platform. So, if you take one thing away from today, this is it, right here. We're making the camera the first augmented reality platform. So,、uh, for those of you who watched us roll out cameras across all our apps, and you, know, you wondered what we might have been doing. That was Act One. This is Act Two. Giving developers the power to build for augmented reality in the first augmented reality platform, the camera. All right, so let's take a look at what this is going to look like. All right, so you're going to be able to swipe to the camera, and you're going to start discovering effects that your friends are using and that are relevant to the place you're at nearby. And you're going to be able to scroll through all the effects, and there are going to be a lot of them. Now we're going to start today with all the Basic effects that you're used to,、right. face masks, art,、uh, art frames, style transfers. And now, since this is an open platform, you're going to be able to create your own. And instead of having maybe 10 or 20 options to choose from,、uh, you're going to have thousands of options from creators all over the world, from all different kinds of cultures and backgrounds and styles. And this is launching in beta today.
Now, this is, this is just the first step, though. So we have, we have a, a lot crazier stuff that I want to show you uh, that's going to be coming soon. So now, for, for real augmented reality, you don't just want the ability to do those tools. You also want the ability to have realistic 3D objects. And in order to do that, uh, you need to have a platform that, has, that gives them precise location, a realistic relationship uh, with objects around them in their environment. So there's an AI technique for doing this called simultaneous localization and mapping, or SLAM, uh, for those of you in the, the AI community. And um, here's how this works. So you're going to be able to easily create anything you want. You can write a fun message next to your breakfast, and, and it's going to be able to slide onto the table. And since we understand the depth of the table, you saw it was occluded in the right place as it came up. And you're going to be able to pan around, and it's going to maintain its position on the table exactly uh, as if it were a real object in the world. So we can make this more fun. Let's add some, uh, some breakfast sharks uh, swirling around my bowl. Uh, some clouds, and you know, there you go. It, it's got the depth right, so when they go behind the ball, uh, they're, they're occluded, it, it gets the depth of the table and all that. All right, so th there's some pretty involved AI work uh, to, to make this all work, and, and we can do this on a phone. So, uh, now, but we're just getting started. This is, this is just the first one that I want to show you. These are the technological foundations for advanced AR. Let's go to the next one. Now, since we're mapping out uh, these scenes in 3D, right, since we have the depth of an image, we can go from taking a still photo to mapping out a whole 3D scene. So this actually is, was taken from a 2D still image in our office in Seattle. And from the still photo, we constructed a 3D scene. And now, because it's a 3D scene, we can pan around. How crazy is that? Crazy. <laughs> All right. We can change the lighting. We can turn the lighting down. We can move the lighting from the front of the room to the back. And you can add um, all kinds of effects. You know, we can fill the room up with water if we want. Again, it's got the depth right. Uh, you can add a lot of bouncy balls. We're a fan of bouncy balls. And, uh, and we can fill the room up with Skittles, because the future is delicious. <laughs> I can't help it. All right. Um, now, look, we, we also have some of the best uh, computer vision and uh, object recognition work in the world. So that's going to help you identify different things in the scene to uh, help you surface relevant effects that you want to check out. So you're going to be able to tap on the coffee mug, and we're going to surface effects that are relevant to coffee. All right, so you can add steam. Uh, you can add a second coffee mug so it looks like you're not drinking, uh, you're not having breakfast alone. <laughs> and uh, since it's a digital object, you can, you can make it bigger if you want or smaller. You can make it any size you want. You can tap on the plant. You can add flowers that are blooming. You can uh, water the plant with a rain cloud or whatever else it is that you do with plants, I guess. Um, you can tap on the wine bottle, and you can add an information card right, that, that, shares, that, that shows um, you know, what the vintage of the wine is and you know, what the rating is and maybe where to get it or maybe even the future even a link to buy it. So there are going to be some of these effects are going to be fun, and others are going to be useful. So in augmented reality, you're going to be able to do all this different stuff. So these are three of the technological building blocks for building augmented reality. Precise location, 3D effects, and object recognition. But now that we've gone through some of the technology, let's take a look at some of the use cases that you're going to be able to, to build and do. All right, so let's start with the most basic. This is an AR tool that Nike created for helping you uh, visualize and share your runs in some fun new ways. Now, in augmented reality, we are going to face near constant reminders that Ime is in better shape than us. <laughs> Ime is probably out for a run right now before he comes on stage in 20 minutes. <laughs> now, look, we, we all do things like this every day, like running, um, you know, everyday things. Running, cleaning our home, doing laundry, changing diapers. And the reality is we're proud of these things, right? We want to express them. But we often don't get a chance to do that because they feel mundane. Right? It doesn't feel special enough to share. So you know, too often, we, we don't share them unless we have something that makes that moment funny or feel like it's going to be relevant to other people. So as, as silly as effects like this might seem, they actually are really important and meaningful because they give us the ability to share what matters to us on a daily basis. Let's talk about games. Now, more than a billion of us play games. And I think that there's going to be a whole new genre of augmented reality games coming. 
So here's an example of a father playing an augmented reality game with his kids in the waiting room at the doctor's office, where he's using the table in the waiting room as the, the game board for a, a tower defense game, and the kids can kind of slap the bad guys before they get to you. Now, there's going to be a lot of awesome stuff like this that comes, and I'm pretty excited about this. This part of the platform is going to come a bit later this year. Let's talk about art. Now, with augmented reality, you're going to be able to create and discover um, all kinds of new art around your city. So, uh, you know, this is actually this is a piece at Facebook headquarters. And, you know, without augmented reality, this actually just looks like a blank wall. But when you are in augmented reality, you get this beautiful piece of art that's not just a painting on the wall, but it fills up the whole space. And it's 3D. And not only that, it, it's, it's something that would be impossible to build uh, or, or make in, in reality, because you have this infinite waterfall of, of paint coming down, and it's, um, it's, it's really quite something to look at. Now, one thing that's, that's kind of a funny side effect of this is that now we're on Facebook, we notice that there are just people gathering around looking at blank walls. <laughs> so, you know, this is going to be a thing in the future, right? I mean, it's just you know, people just kind of sitting around and, and staring at blank walls. So we actually put a physical plaque on this wall to commemorate that this is, we think this is going to be one of the first pieces of augmented reality street art in the world, but there's a lot more like this coming. Now, one of the things that I've always wanted to do is, um, is leave notes for friends at different places. And in order to do this, you need to have a really precise sense of location. So this isn't just about you know, finding a Pokemon within a one block radius. Um, you need a very exact location. Um, so I'm talking about sharing a note to tell your friend what the best special is right next to the sign of the specials at a restaurant. Or, or marking your table at the local dive bar that you go to uh, with your friends. Or, uh, leaving a note for your, your wife on the refrigerator. And so some of the stuff I think is going to be is going to be really special. All right. So those are just a few of the examples of, uh, of what we're doing for this augmented reality platform. And like I said, it starts in closed beta today. Uh, I want to be really clear and, and, and you know set expectations that it's going to take a while for this to develop. Uh, there's a lot in here that we're going to roll out over time. Um, it's, your experience isn't going to change dramatically overnight. Uh, it's going to take a while to roll some of these things out, and then even longer for developers to actually start building all these experiences. But over time, I do think that this is going to be a really important technology that changes how we use our phones um, and, and eventually all of technology. And this is a technology, uh, this is the kind of technology problem that we love to solve and build. Uh, because there's a, a long roadmap of technology to build for years. And so even if we were a little slow to add cameras to all our apps, I am confident that now we're going to push this augmented reality platform forward. And long term, uh, all the work that we're doing here is going to go into the glasses that we all want. It's all the same technology, and this is another step on the path there. All right. Now, we have a lot more to talk about over the next couple of days that relates to the 10-year roadmap to give everyone the, the power to share anything they want with anyone. Um, we're going to talk about AI. Uh, we're going to show you some of the AI work that goes into making this augmented reality platform work and a lot of the other stuff that we're, that we're building. Uh, we're going to talk about virtual reality, and we're going to launch our first social virtual reality product. Virtual reality and augmented reality go hand in hand. And um, you know, this virtual reality experience is going to you know, give you a taste of what it's like to uh, ha have this real sense of presence with your friends, no matter where they are in the world, and to start interacting with all kinds of digital objects on the road to fully augmented reality. We're also launching the next generation of Messenger platform. Uh, we already have AI that uh, helps businesses answer all kinds of questions from their customers. And today we're going to launch a bunch of discover tools that are going to help you find the businesses and bots that you want to interact with on the platform. Tomorrow, uh, we're going to update you on all of our work around connectivity. We have our team in Arizona right now preparing for the second flight of Aquila, our solar-powered plane that's going to help beam down internet connectivity to people all around the world. And we're going to update you on a lot of the other technology that we're building, too. And you're also going to hear from Regina Dugan about some of the work that we're doing in Building 8, even further out beyond augmented reality. And that includes uh, work around direct brain interfaces, uh, that are going to eventually one day uh, let you communicate using only your mind. Now, that stuff is really far out, uh, but 
she actually has some pretty interesting stuff that she's going to talk about today, or uh, tomorrow. All right, so that's what we're working on. Uh, we're building tools to give everyone the power to share what they want, and I'm really excited about this augmented reality platform and all the stuff that we're going to be able to create with it. And this is an important time for us to work on technology like this, because we all have a lot of work to build community and bring people closer together. And as always, it is an honor to be on this journey with you. So thank you all for coming out. And now I'm going to